looks good. Okay. Good. All right. You just look at me. You can ignore the camera. Mm -hmm. What happened yesterday? I committed the worst imaginable offense. I mean, I believe there are a lot of muggings and killings in Atlanta. There are probably a lot of rapes, serial murders, but, you know, I went beyond that. I committed the terrible crime of jaywalking, which I, of course, didn't know was a crime. I come from a country where you're allowed to cross the road where you like, and it hadn't occurred to me that you weren't allowed to cross the road between the two main conference venues. Indeed, I'd been out for work earlier in the morning, and I'd seen a bunch of people cross the road, and nobody had stopped them. Uh, and it, it simply hadn't occurred to me that I was doing anything wrong. If, I, if it had, I wouldn't have done it, because I'm, I'm pathologically law-abiding. I haven't got, you know, so much as a parking offence on my record. And, uh, uh, and it's absolutely alien to my um, nature to... Um, uh, transgress, especially you know, when one's a guest in a foreign country, and I do think you need, you're under an extra obligation to be very attentive to the, the law. But I'm terribly sorry it hadn't occurred to me that I wasn't allowed to cross the road, and I, I, I didn't appreciate the gravity of the offence I gave to the policeman on duty, nor did I initially recognise him as a policeman because he was wearing a uh, uh, you know, one of those things which we call a bomber jacket, which is a thing you wear with a, it's a, a kind of like a jerkin with a zip front. So then actually, you know, his his uniform was was invisible. I, I mean, normally, you know, when, when a policeman stops you, he either shows you his identification or he he has, um, you know, you can see his name and badge are exposed on his um, on his uniform. So all I was aware of was a rather rather intrusive young man shouting at me, telling me like I shouldn't have crossed the road there, and I thanked him for his advice and went on. I was on my way, you know, to get my badge for the convention. I was going to spend a blameless afternoon, you know, listening to my fellow historians instruct me in arcane topics. Um, and I'm afraid, I, you know, that was where I was focused on, on that. I was looking forward um, to it. Uh, and I think that I um, uh, I caused the, the young policeman great offence when he accosted me by asking him what his authority was for stopping me and whether if he was a policeman as he claimed I could see his identification. And he, 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 uh, he didn't take kindly to that. He, he told me he was a policeman in uniform and he wasn't obliged to show me any identification and I, I I may have passed a comment on his uniform which was under appreciative um, because you know that, that sort of jacket that kind of zip fronted thing in where I come from is, is the sort of thing that um, rather loose it's considered rather loose garment you'd expect you know, I, you know maybe um, um, uh, someone um, affecting um, uh, a, 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 a rather raffish you know, image might, might wear, but not a policeman. Um, but uh, so we were locked, really, by that point in, I think, mutual misunderstanding and um, demanding each other's identification <laughs> documents. <laughs> and um, uh, and I, 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 I was extremely puzzled by what was happening because, I, I mean, I wasn't aware that I had done anything wrong and it, it, it hadn't occurred to me that I, I would be subjected to an interrogation by a policeman who would have to. So I, I, was, I was hesitant and I was cautious, and I, in particular, um, of course, I didn't have any um, identification documents on me that I thought were in any way um, official. I, I had my, you know, my I got a, a Tufts and Harvard ID cards. Uh, I think that was, as I was trying to think, what have I got that I could show you? And I, I couldn't think of, that I had anything beyond that. I was wondering whether it would it would satisfy him. Um, but I'm afraid he, he lost patience with me before I had had time to resolve this dilemma. And um, uh, said, um, uh, I am going to arrest you. That was, that was the notice he gave me. And again, in the culture I come from, this wouldn't mean that the conversation was over, nor would it mean that you were about to be subjected to terrible, terrible violence. And this young man kicked my legs from under me, wrenched me around in what I think is a sort of um, um, 
of judo move. Um, wrenched my arms and I pinned me to the ground, wrenched my arms behind my back, handcuffed me. And I mean, naturally I was bridling at this um, moment and he called uh, um, his colleagues, his um, assistants, and I had five burly policemen pinioning me to the, the ground and pressing my neck with really very severe pain and, and I'm a mass of contusions and and grazes and they ripped my coat, my spectacles had fallen off at the first assault from the policeman, which is very distressing, you know, to those of us who um, depend on them. I'm afraid this photo is a bit fake, you know, it's this kind of thing photographers do to try and make the author look good. But you know, I actually do depend on my my spectacles. So I was traumatized, disorientated, my conference program was in the gutter and I was begging them to you know, give it back to me um, and to give me my spectacles back. Um, so I was in a you know, pretty shocked um, condition at that point. Uh, and I, you know, I was kind of begging them to be reasonable because you know, I still find it incredible that uh, an aging, mild-mannered professor of impeccable antecedents, you know, maybe a little distrait, um, should be um, the, the subject of such uh, abominable treatment. Um, I was then, I, uh, the, you know, uh, uh, um, the security man in charge of security at the, the hotel c came out and d d was a very helpful, calming influence on the, on, the, um, on the police and he told me that really all I could do at that stage was, you know, to go, go, go with the flow and accept the situation because it was, it was impossible to expect the police at that point to reverse their decision. Indeed, one of them told me one of the more professional of the police who had assaulted me um, told me that um, they really now had to continue with the the process because if they admitted that they'd made a mistake, I, I would be able to sue the city of Atlanta. So, uh, you know, acting on the um, um, uh, advice really of the um, security chief at the um, hotel to my very very grateful for his, his help, I submitted to the, the rest of the humiliations and indignities which awaited me, which included being shipped downtown in a filthy, fetid paddy wagon, um, handcuffed to some other suspected um, felon, um, in the, and, and spending, you know, you know, when you arrive at this detention center. I mean, I, I'm sure this will be a very new experience for most people watching this broadcast because you know, for we um, a, a, aging members of the bourgeoisie, we don't normally get an insight into this world. When you go downtown, you know, you're subjected to really very humiliating procedures, which include uh, having these very, very intrusive searches. Having, uh, I had to, um, I had my box of peppermints confiscated, presumably on suspicion that it might be some dangerous narcotic. Um, um, you're fingerprinted, you're mugshotted, you're medically um, uh, uh, examined, you're offered these revolting cellophane wrapped sandwiches and tiny little sachets of, of like, disgusting looking livid um, liquid, which is the, you know, the, the way I suppose the city discharges its responsibility to, to feed people who are penned in these, these um, very really nasty and, and, and ugly and dirty um, environments for, for hours on end. And in my case, that experience lasted eight hours. Eight hours? Eight hours.